known as a Japanese bow. Koreans call it the jongbong, long staff, long stick. Or uh, in Selambam, in the Indian style, just call it a long stick. Or you can call this the gun, the Chinese gun, kajol, bang. Just a, it's a long stick, right? So we're gonna work with this. This is very common in most martial arts styles. Not all the styles. You're not gonna fight it in jujitsu. It's not a traditional weapon in Taekwondo. But a lot of martial artists who do Taekwondo or karate and they practice weapons, they often start here because it's one of the easiest, simple weapons to learn. It's just a very long stick. And the other great thing about using a martial arts staff is that you can find a stick anywhere and effectively defend yourself against multiple attackers, against a knife, against somebody who's bigger and stronger than you. And it's simply because you have an incredible reach advantage. You can thrust, you can strike, you can strike basic strikes, you can shove somebody, get them out of your face. We're not necessarily going to do the spinning for self-defense, but you're always going to spin in your warm-up to build strength, speed, power. It's like cross-training. It's like boxers jumping rope. So spinning is like jumping rope for boxers. Good afternoon. It's good to see you. Russ, nice to see you. Hope it's beautiful in the UK today and you're not stuck inside and there's no tier five shutdown. I'm joking because I know that there is. Hopefully it's sunny outside though. And you can get outside, maybe go to the balcony, go to the roof, go in the backyard, wherever you can go. Go to the park if you can. Spin the stick. Do something, right? We can't control what they do to us all the time. We can only control how we respond. You can't control the weather. Just respond to how you, or change how you respond to it. All right, so we're just going side to side. Got it. Well, that's all right. That's good too. Keep yourself sane. Keep yourself mentally and physically fit during times of COVID lockdown. We're going side to side now. Yeah, perfect. The garage is perfect. Side to side. The point is do something. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't wait for them to make up their mind. Don't wait for them to change their mind. Them being the powers that control whether you get to go outside or not. They want to say tier five, tier four. They want to say lockdown, whatever. You can't control that. I can't control that. I can control whether I get a stick in my hand and I spin. So you're going side to side. The purpose for this spin is to build power in the forearms, power in the hands, lubricate the joints, stay safe from injury in the workout, but also going back to self-defense, I don't want to lose my stick. I want to have great strength in my hands when I'm using it for self-defense or if I want to do combat bow. Maybe you want to learn how to fight with somebody else. Maybe you want to use a quarter staff. Learn the HEMA martial arts, the martial arts from Europe. You get a quarter staff, you're like Little John and Robin Hood out there making wrongs right with your quarter staff. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. Learn how to spin, not for self-defense, but so that when you do your self-defense, you're a lot stronger. When you fight with your bow or your changbang, your Chinese gun, you're a lot stronger. All right, so we're going back and forth, back and forth, good. Yes, that's all right. That's good, like I said, that's good feedback. You start hitting yourself less, but when you do, it hurts a lot more. <laughs> this is my right hand. You're gonna have it in your right hand. I put the tape closer so I don't have to get so far back. This is the middle. That's where I find my balance point. I'm using the rattan, the lightweight staff. It's very flexible. You can see how much it shakes. That's very traditional. This is more like the Chinese gong. I'm gonna put it in my right hand. I'm gonna turn it up. So the pinky faces the sky. The right, uh, left thumb comes above the right arm and the palms are gonna be facing away from each other. We're gonna do a butterfly spin. Take it here, keep your wrists together, turn and just slide that right hand, the starting hand into, see where the thumbs come together? Position so that as you pull your left thumb out and your hand out of the way, it sits in your right hand, turns up, the right hand comes out of the way and you get it in there. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time. Especially if you're training martial arts at home. Martial arts training at home for beginners, or this is a martial arts tutorial at home for beginners. 
when you're at home and you're trying to teach yourself or learn martial arts from the internet because you can't leave the house or maybe there's no martial arts school close to you or you don't have the money to invest yet. You want to invest your time before you invest your money. This is a great way to start. Start with a long martial arts staff, a Japanese bow, Korean jang bong, Chinese gun, cudgel, bong, different names for basically the same thing. And of course, there's the Indian style of martial arts, which is really the birthplace. India is the birthplace of the martial arts. Then it went to China. India was first. And the bow was one of the first martial arts weapons, the long staff. Once you do that, you start to get a feel for it. You can speed it up. Might be a good idea to take off your big chunky watch. I'm already in the middle of it, so I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'll wait till I'm done. The thumbs down. I like to work around stuff like that. I don't like a perfect, I don't like a perfect situation. I don't like my training to ever be comfortable. That's just me, though. Train with adversity. COVID, shut down, that's a big adversity for a lot of people. Train with it. Let it be the reason you train, not the excuse not to train. I'm stuck at home, I'm going crazy, my body's getting out of shape. Find a way to train. If you're stuck in the house, get a short staff and do the short staff. It's only because I've been doing this for over 30 years. What more than that? I keep getting older. I keep forgetting how many years. But you're going to be as good or better than me. You're going to be better than I am, even with less time training, because you're going to pay attention. You're going to challenge yourself. You're going to get out of your comfort zone so that you grow. You're going to train yourself to learn something new. And every time you drop that stick, I had to throw it down. I was trying to drop it earlier. I couldn't drop it. Every time you drop it, you're going to pick it up. And then when you get comfortable with it, you're going to go faster and faster. There we go. Faster and faster. And when you go faster or more complex, that's when you're going to drop it. And when you drop it, you're growing. When you drop it, that's proof that you're moving forward. Right hand, grab it in the middle. You see the purple tape and the yellow tape. Yellow is kind of fading out. I need to find a different color. But you're going to go into a figure eight spin. That was my super slow-mo mode, I'm trying to slow it down. I've been thinking about it this way lately. It's like this motion and this motion. You do one here and you do one here. Or think of it this way. It's a circle here and it's a circle over here. It's the same circle, but because it twists in the middle like an infinity sign. This is called the infinity spin. Your thumb carves a sideways figure eight for this forward figure eight spin. Also known as an infinity symbol, so it's also called an endless spin. So in the right hand, you go down, up, down and up. Let me turn a little to the side. Down and up, I'll turn it a little bit more. Down, up, from the back, one side, from the other side, one side. And the whole time you're doing it, your hand is staying closed. You're not gonna open your hand. Keep your hand closed, stomach up and in, abs tight, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And once you get it, you're going to speed it up by squeezing your stomach muscles, your abs. Keep your chin back, small moves in your shoulders and your hips, small moves, tight here. That's going to increase the speed, going faster and faster. After you've done that, put it into the right hand like this. And that's the same way we started. You went out here. Came back here, side to side. Now it's in your left hand, turning in and turning back. And again, you're going to, hello, it's good to see you. You're gonna come sideways, sideways, sideways figure eight. Circle this way, a circle this way. Down, up, or up and down. This is the up one. This one, down, turning your thumb all the way through, slow and smooth. Take your time, always get that other hand up, don't let it dangle in the dirt. 
bringing it up, you're going around, and you're going here, side, side. Good, I haven't seen Rick Bateman. Sounds like a character from the 90s movies in the United States, but I'm sure he's out there, and I'm sure he's really good with the bow. Or the John Bong, maybe it's a Korean guy. Korean style, Rick Bateman doesn't sound Korean, but could be. His mom or dad might be. Doesn't matter. Everybody and anybody can learn how to use the martial arts staff. Whether it's the long staff, the short staff, all the staffs are the same. Now you did this one, we started in the other hand, and then you passed it, pinky to pinky, palms facing the sky, and I want you to work on passing the staff from one hand into the other hand. One hand and the other one. And all this is, when it comes over here to the left side of the body, the right side, good. Welcome, Harold. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. You're going to grab it with the right. When it comes over here to the right side, it's in the, or the left side. This is the left side, but it's in the right hand. It's crossing the body. Grab it. Cross the body, grab it. On a forward spin, the pass happens on the opposite side, pinky to pinky, palms face the sky. Keep your stomach up and in, abs tight. Push yourself now to go faster, taking small steps forward. One step forward, and then bring that back with the other foot forward. One, two, you're gonna go faster and faster until you either drop it, then you're gonna pick it up and keep going or until you hit 30 seconds. Your goal is to put some stress on your body in a positive way, get the heart rate up, lean out faster, build more capacity. That means the more you do, the more you'll be able to do. But push yourself, get out of your comfort zone. In this martial arts tutorial for beginners at home using the Japanese bow, the bow staff, now Jap bow means staff, so when I say bow staff, that's kind of an inside joke. And the reason I say bow staff is because people type in how to use their bow staff. So I want you to learn how to use your bow staff, how to spin a bow staff. But I can tell you that when you say bow staff, it means staff staff. I personally don't care one way or the other. A lot of people do. I've got a purple side and a yellow side. I was going forward and the purple side went down and the yellow side followed it. Now I'm just going to reverse all of it. Yes. Amen, Sensei Emmett. Pull the yellow side now. I was pushing the purple side down. I'm going to reverse it by pulling the yellow side up. Slow and smooth, smooth as fast. This is a figure eight spin, an infinity endless spin, just in the reverse. I'm doing one hand only. Now, we're not going to go over that in this workout. We're not going to do it, but I'm going to show you that when you do a forward spin or a reverse spin to the front of the body, step with one foot in front of the other one, make your body a smaller target, harder to hit, easier to get the staff around, and then on your own, in practice, put it out to the side and do the same motion to the front and the back. Now, it's the exact same spin. It's just a different plane. Looks like this from the side, front to back. That's gonna to start to strengthen the back of your shoulders. That's gonna increase your flexibility and the strength in this position. And when you're learning martial arts at home, that this is a martial arts tutorial at home for beginners, for you, and you wanna learn how to really practically defend yourself, get strong in all ranges of motion, strength throughout every single plane. We're gonna to continue to do that. I'm going reverse in the figure eight. Remember, I was on the right hand. I was um, sort of flip it, and I dropped it on the most basic move. But that's good. That's good. That just shows that I'm not perfect. Don't go for perfection. Go for improvement. Go for learning more. Go for trying more things that make you look silly and gets you out of your comfort zone so that you really grow. Get your ego out of the way. I said that in a video, and someone said, because I have a belt and has the seven stripes, the, um, the rank, and they're, they're, the thread is gold. And they're like, what do you mean get your ego out of the way? Look at you, Mr. Ego, you got the gold. Now I got a gold tiger on my shirt. Talk about ego. You're gonna push that 
purple down or pull the yellow up. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other hand. Push the purple down, that's forward, to reverse it, pull the yellow up. If that guy ever comes back and watches this video and he sees me wearing a gold tiger, after seeing those gold stripes and I say, get your ego out of the way, his brain might explode. For self-defense. I don't know how that fits, but it just seemed like the right time to say it. All right, pulling it up. It's a Friday. I went from teaching like six, nine classes in person to 29 last week or the week before. No, this, yeah, last week was the first week I had that many and then I had it again this week. And it makes me a little bit tired on a Friday. And uh, if you know me very well, it makes me a little cranky. But in a good way. It just means that I try to make my own energy more. That bag's in my way. <laughs> Get out of my way, bag. Make, there we go. I'm trying to spin between a whole bunch of bags. Maybe that should be a practice. There we go. Do the side to side. Now, back to the bag, since he wants to get in this shot. From here, you stand behind your weapon. You point your thumb and you thrust. That's the first part of self-defense using your long martial arts staff. You put it between you and the threat, especially if he has a knife, or he or she or, or it, or whatever. They have a knife, they have a weapon. You want to keep the distance between you and that knife. You don't want them to close the gap. You're going to thrust it, and you're going to go that straight line first. For self-defense, think immediate, direct, and explosive. And the most direct with this staff is just straight in through his eyes, nose, ears, mouth, face, his ear if he turned his head, I guess. But, that, but you get the point, right? So from here, you stand behind it. The stick is longer than the knife, even if they have a machete. still longer, and it doesn't bleed. You don't want them too close. From here, point thrust. Point thrust. So after you do a few spins in your workout, when you do a martial arts training or martial arts tutorial at home for beginners and you're using your bow, you want to practice as much striking, as much self-defense as you do spinning. I want you to learn all of the spins as much as you can. Learn all kinds of tricks, techniques, all kinds of cool things. And, um, but, but don't neglect the self-defense. What's the point if you can really spin the staff and you're not, you're not going to be Darth Maul spinning your staff or spinning your staff in self-defense. It doesn't work. They're going to time it. They're going to collapse it to your body. They're going to knock it out of your hand. And you, then you've lost your advantage. You have reach advantage. You have a force. This is a force multiplier. You take all the power of your body, and then you just generate massive force. And it's concentrated there in that tip. So from here, thrusting, right? Thrusting. Striking down, striking the face, bringing that backside up under the groin, up under the chin. So many basic, simple ways to use this for self-defense, but I want you to practice that as much as you do spinning. All right, so you get behind it, you aim, you thrust. You don't have a bag to hit, no problem. Don't hit a bag. Aim, thrust, aim, thrust, over and over. Aim, thrust, add a second strike, coming down at this angle. Now see that? This is important to me. Stop this over your elbow. Don't get it up under there. Your ribs are under there, your intercostal muscles that make you breathe. Your organs are in there. There's no reason to stick the staff under your arm anyway. It's not a nunchuck, right? You're not doing that nunchuck, pop, Bruce Lee move. It's here. This is self-defense. You strike here and it comes here to protect that elbow, to protect that joint. Start with a broom, start with a broom. Invest your time, invest your energy, Inve blood, sweat, tears, invest your time, your body, before you invest your money. We buy too much junk, right? And there's perfect sticks everywhere. That's the other good reason. If you learn how to be mindful, and I'm, I'm laughing at myself because I'm thinking, if I had to grab a stick right now, someone busted in the door, and I gotta get a stick, and I've got <laughs> I've got a, I've probably have about 200 sticks, but they're all martial arts sticks, so that's the joke. But let's say you're at the restaurant, let's say you're at your school, or you're at your job, or you're at the bank, or anywhere. You're on vacation, you're in the hotel room, you're down by the beach, 
you, someone comes with a knife and it's this long. And they're just slashing people and they're stabbing people. Good morning, Adrish. And they're getting, they're just causing mayhem and destruction. You don't want to go up there and try to be the one to block the knife and take it away with your bare hands if you can pick up a stick. And then when they come at you with the knife, you've got the reach advantage. You stick it through his face, smash him here, bring that down over top, come through with a rifle butt strike in with a bayonet attack, use your stick. So that's why I like you to, I love for you to start with a broom. Mop handle, um, rake handle, even if it's plastic or metal, because a lot of them are cheap these days and they make them out of cheaper materials and you, don't, you can't always find a good wooden broom. But if you have a nice broom, painter's pole, uh, sanding pole, for those of you guys who know about drywall work, a sanding pole, you just unscrew it. If it's a mop and it's, and it's attached there, and, or a broom, and it's all eaten up, and you're done using it to sweep the floor, cut it off, right? Just cut it off. And then you have the perfect size staff for indoor training. It's not gonna be six feet tall like this one is. There we go. It's not six feet tall or 72 inches. That's what a lot of them are when you buy them. There's a link below if you wanna go and see all the different options you can get. There's a ton of them. Hardwood, softwood. This one's rattan. This is more Chinese style, but I love this one. And they're all inexpensive. But don't buy one until you train with the broom, you train with the mop, you train with what you have. Invest your time. Don't invest your money ever. I don't care what it is. You want to go to the gym, 2021 New Year's resolutions, you want to get lean and fit, do air squats, do squat jumps, drop down and do some push-ups. Only don't put your arms here, get them next to your body and do them right. Do a bunch of sit-ups, do some flutter kicks, some leg lifts, some side straddle hops, Getting all excited thinking about the Marine Corps. But do, but do that first, right? Before you start to spend the money, buy a membership that doesn't expire for three years, takes the money out of your checking account every 30 days, and you go four times. Because you didn't know this, but the Purple Gym is designed for you to sign up for the membership, have them taken, and then hate going there. So you don't go, but then, or the LA Fitness, they're really good at this. They're designed to take your money and get you on a membership, and then you try to cancel it. And they're like, and, and you realize how hard it is, right? Just really, really hard to cancel. You gotta come to the place. You gotta get the, the, the form. You have to have it notarized sometimes. You have to have it sent overnight mail. It's ridiculous. They do it on purpose. They know most people are gonna quit. Don't let that be you. Invest your time in yourself, blood, sweat, tears, and then buy a staff. All right, let me stop talking. Let's go back to spinning. Open the hand. I know it's supposed to be a, a martial arts tutorial, for beginners at home, and it is, <laughs> but we're talking about some advanced ideas. But who says, maybe you're ready for that. All right, so this is the middle, right? That's my balance point somewhere in there. I always put it somewhere in the, around the middle. I've got two sides. That's my left hand. I'm gonna turn pinky up and open my hand. Now the goal is to turn your hand, yeah, absolutely, and then open and turn it. Yeah, since I am, this is why I find it so funny. People who are traditional uh, Kobudo guys, I don't know if I'm saying it right anymore. Uh, you know, the, the uh, Bojutsu or whatever they want to call themselves, the traditionalists, you know, where there's only one way to hold the bow. This way is never right. But for them, this is the only, and, and I'm always, a, I'm, a, I'm a like, you know, learn it all, man. Learn every style you can. Take what works for you, weave them together, and then if you meet somebody who does it in a different way, you won't say it's good or bad. You'll say, oh, it's just different. And, and you have to adopt that philosophy as a martial artist. It's not good. It's not bad. It's different. But I always think it's funny. They're like, don't spin. You would never spin. Spinning is wrong. And I say, spinning is the best way to get your hands strong. It's the best way to build power in your grip. I know that's a fact. And then the other one. You know, the best way to build shoulder power is the boken, the Japanese sword. You want to do kendo, kenjutsu, all the great um, old sword masters that I met of the Japanese style. They have huge shoulders. They can't even get their, their uh, gi on their shoulders sometimes. They're so big. Yeah, beginner's mind. Beginner's mind and an open mind. Like I tell people, stop getting mad and stop having so many opinions. It's because I'm telling myself that. 
And so a constant reminder. With a good martial artist, when they're teaching you, they're really talking to themselves. As, as, as I say with my golden tiger on my chest, right? I like this shirt, by the way. This is the V-neck. It's uh, super lightweight. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys go uh, check out, if you have not already, go uh, type in Sensei Emmett, and then go watch a lot of his interviews. He's got one of the best martial arts, best new martial arts channels I've seen in a long time. Because he's interviewing some of the luminaries, some of the smartest of us, and then some of the not so smart ones in uh, martial arts. But if you haven't checked out Sensei Emmett yet, and subscribe to him, let him, let him grow his channel, let him, let him make a dollar. He's stuck in the tier five shutdown in, in Ireland since March. I don't know how you do it. Well, we do it because we don't have a choice, right? But that man, that is rough, rough going. We didn't think they'd do this to us. We didn't think they could. And they say, well, we'll just lose half of all small businesses around the world, but, but not that many people will die. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, don't, I gotta change the subject. Like I said, stop having so many opinions. All right, anyway, side to side, that's your wrist roll. All I'm doing is opening the hand, I let it balance there. You're gonna fall to the ground now. I let it balance there, and then I turn my hand. From here, I turn my hand. And this is the hard part because Oh, thank you, Adrisha. I appreciate that. I wrote a book. I, I, it was actually, um, Adrisha, the f funny story about that, that book is I wrote that as a pamphlet to answer the questions I kept answering. I, I worked with so many uh, special needs kids and so many parents, ADD, ADHD, like a third of my members, somewhere on the autism spectrum, a lot of Asperger's, and parents would come in, and a lot of it was parenting. The parents got so much better at communication with the children. So it's a book, The Child Whisperer. The original, someone else wrote a book with the same name, but I, I was first. But the original book, and um, they kept asking me the same questions. And, I, and then finally, I just wrote it down. Like, okay, you know, talk, say this, don't say that. Do it like that. And then I put it in a book form, and then I would give it to all my new clients. And then I'd have doctors calling me up. Hey, can I get a couple of copies of those for my patients? And then I had a university start a program and say, hey, we want to teach this to the new teachers. And then, hey, we want to teach this to the school counselors. And so all of a sudden, so then I said, well, let's publish the book. And um, we went to a publisher and they're like, you know, yeah, we'll do this. You got to do that. It's going to take a year and a half. And I'm like, no, can we sell? I didn't even know you could self-publish. So we self-published. We figured that one out. All right, go into a finger roll. And then, this was what was really funny. I had a student who was a highly functioning autistic adult. And he wrote a book and he went on the Oprah Winfrey show. She's still around, but she doesn't do the same show. The Oprah Winfrey show with Temple Grandin, who's a uh, big animal, that's almost a big animal mechanic, but that would mean she's a veterinarian. And she's a highly functioning adult woman, and Thomas McKean was a highly functioning adult man. And somehow Thomas said, yeah, I'm doing martial arts with this guy. And I think he wrote a book too. And then boom, overnight, sold like tens of thousands of copies. Back in the day when Oprah could move books. She can still move books, but not like back then. And then a whole bunch of different uh, companies around the world started saying, hey, we want to do it in Spanish. We want to do it in Portuguese. We want to do it in German. We want to uh, publish it in, uh, in uh, the Netherlands, in Dutch. Let's, let's translate it to Dutch. Let's translate it to Korean. So it's in a bunch of different languages. And it was an afterthought. I didn't even, I think I wrote it in the night. And then it's, and since then it's sold, um, and then I used all of the money to pay for our scholarship program. The kids couldn't afford, who couldn't afford to come, then we, we used the money from the book. And then we were able to teach hundreds of kids over like 20 years with that book. Thanks, Oprah. Or I should say thanks, Thomas. All right, so you just, you're just going through the fingers and, and you want to strengthen these fingers and pull it down and pull it down. And it's no longer in print because I was like, oh, it seems really amateurish. I need to rewrite it and then... I just never did it. All right. And from here, these three fingers, grab it with the thumb. So you go one, two, three, these three fingers, grab it with the thumb. And you're gonna do that just a couple more times with the thumb. And then the other hand. 
Yeah, that's what it is. There are a couple of, I have a couple of them. I wrote one with uh, a Dr. Scott Hall from the University of Dayton School of Education and Allied Professions. He's a psychologist. And uh, we call it behavior coaching. Behavior coaching is uh, all about having the conversation. And we used to teach school teachers in a seminar or in workshops, and we gave them a workbook. And then I wrote a version for the parents, and that was behavior coaching. And then I had written a couple books on um, managing your school better, that kind of stuff. I don't think any of them are in print anymore. Although there's a lot of copies out there of some of them. And I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some more life under my belt before I write another one. Oh, cool. It's not the most polished book, but if you use it, it works. I'm using it right now. I use, I use the same, just the idea. It's all communication with kids. If I say, stop talking while I'm talking, you do that again, I'm going to put your name on the board. Pull a card, turn the tag. You're going from yellow, from green to yellow to red. And you've seen all this. Now they have a, an app called Class Dojo where they can immediately send the bad news to the parents that your kid's not doing the right thing. And, the, and it's all punishment based. It's all coercion. It's using embarrassment and shame to change behavior. And I would always say, he's looking at me. She's standing still. He's thinking about what I'm saying. And I say, you know what? I feel respected when you look at me while I'm talking. It's that simple. And then, and then I say, now when you go back to the teacher's class, if you look at her the way you're looking at me, she's going to feel respected. And it's just changing the language. And in schools today, they say, make a good choice. Friends, we're all friends. And we're not all friends. Good morning, Wilson. <laughs> Getting up on a soapbox again. This is supposed to be a simple, basic uh, home tutorial. When you're stuck in the house, I want you to go into wrist roll, wrist roll, across the body. It might not be easy yet, but try it. Wrist roll in, wrist roll out. Anyway, it's all, it's all language. How, how you talk to yourself is how you talk to other people. And uh, in schools now, especially in the States, they're so broken. And boys are getting hammered. Self-esteem in this country and, and in the West, for boys especially, is at an all-time low. All-time low. It's the lowest it's ever been. And it's getting worse. And the bullying's getting worse. And, uh, you know, it's all this political correct language. It's all this, uh, and it, it's not just political correct, it's, um, it's not specific, right? Good morning. So you're going to come here, you're going to do a wrist roll into a wrist roll, and then when you come back out, I want you to throw in a finger roll if you can. So wrist roll, finger roll, wrist roll, finger roll, and then final exercise, and I know I've, I've been talking about all this other stuff. Believe it or not, though, it's all related. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like uh, I'm sure I'm sure there's some good stuff. There. I'm not I'm not the hugest. I'm not the largest Bruce Lee fan in the world. I just I, I think he was probably a, a really good person. Hopefully he was a great dad. Hopefully he was a good husband. Um, seemed like a great athlete. I think he had some interesting ideas. But when you watch a movie, especially movies now, it's like how much is that? I know so much of it's not true. So I don't know. I don't know what's true. What's not true. The ideas that are attributed to him about uh, flow, being like water, I think those are all great ideas, right? Um, obviously, they're all great ideas. Uh, learn as much as you can, take what works for you, great idea. Um, the concept behind the one-inch punch, using the, the center line of the body in the, uh, not the machine gun punch, but what do we call that, the Wing Chun punch, all these ideas, great ideas. I believe in all that, so I don't know. Yeah, let's do some lightsaber later today. If we have some time, we'll do single bladed lightsaber and double bladed. We'll do that on the weekend. I like to do that on the weekend just to break up the monotony. Take your staff. You're going to put it in your right hand. Just lift it straight up over your head. Now, I don't have the, I'm going to have to really back up or I'm going to come, I'm going to bend my knees and show you. So from here, you know why I like, like Muhammad Ali's philosophy a little bit better? Because Muhammad Ali got in the ring and fought so many people. <laughs> like, for real, for real. The rest was a lot of movie stuff. Um, uh, go to ultrasabers.com. Ultrasabers, all one word, dot com. Turn this over your head. Huge Muhammad Ali fan. Right here. 
Bruce Lee. I love the movies, right? But I like Jackie Chan a lot better. And I like Jackie Chan because he's like an amazing athlete and he's flipping and spinning and he's got like, what, 600 movies or something? And he's funny. I like funny guys and he doesn't take himself too seriously. You're gonna turn it out and turn it out. Now this is the way we started. Warming up the wrist, side to side, building the power. You're just gonna do that over the head. When you come to the right, you're gonna drop it behind your back. Now, there's no spin when you go behind the back, you're gonna hit yourself in the head. You just bring it straight down, and behind your back, you're gonna turn your thumb up. Your left hand is gonna come under it, thumbs up, and pull it out. And then it just goes straight up over your head again. So you turn it, palms facing back, pinky to pinky, palms up, same motion. Pull it, make sure your elbows don't bend though, you're gonna hit your head. Pull it out, drop it, bring it up, turn it out, back, and after you do this for 30 seconds, go the other way. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna, you're gonna get a really cool trick, which is overhead behind the back, but you're also gonna stretch out your shoulders and your chest, you're gonna become a lot stronger, and all those, you know, that flexibility is gonna dramatically increase. You know, your ability to bring your hand, some people are like this, they're stuck in this, this, this. you're gonna be able to, you're gonna have really healthy, strong shoulders because of overhead and behind the back. That's all I've got for right now. Please check the links below, like, subscribe, uh, send me messages, pasquinelli.com, Pasquinelli, go there, Send me the message from that message box and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.